G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're at stage two of the Sump Swap Shuffle. We're going to be doing the aquascape on this amazing tank and we're going to finish off the cable management underneath the cabinet. So we'll get straight into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this board on the back of the inside of the cabinet and I'm going to cut out little sections here so that I can push it right to the top and I'm going to screw it in place. This is going to create a board that will be able to mount the power supplies as well as our dosing pump on this rack. It's going to give us some more usable space so that we can really neaten this whole area up. So I'll start by cutting out these little corners and then I'll drill it in place. So we've cut out the corners of our board. We're going to slide it in place and then finish off with each of the screws to hold it in place and probably one on either side. We're not going to have much weight on this so I'm not going to worry about putting in a heap of screws. So we have our board secured in place and now we're going to put our dosing pump rack on and it's just a case of two screws, bang, bang, and that way we'll have the perfect rack for our dosing pump. So I'm about to start the aquascape and I'm gonna take some water out of the tank with my hose. I'm gonna drain it down about a third so that I can more easily get in there to work on the rock work. I'll also drain some water into some buckets so that if we need to take any of the corals out we can easily put them in the bucket until they get glued back in place. But I'll start draining this hose now. So because we've turned the return pump off the level in the sump has gone up a little bit and it's just uh, made me realize that we haven't cleaned out our new Octo Essence 130 skimmer. So I'll show you how good these skimmers are. So I was here the other night and there's already a nice thick layer or level of waste in the skimmer. So that's perfect. And I'm just going to give it a quick clean out. And it's a good time to do this because sometimes when you're working on the aquascape and you turn the return pump back on, you'll find that the skimmer will over skim and we don't want to end up with any of this waste back in the tank. So it's always a good time to clean the skimmer before you do any aquascaping. I'm just going to take a few of these precious corals out before I start to do the scape just so that I can be sure that I put them back in a position that's perfect for them as well as ensuring that I don't crush them or fall or anything falls on them or anything like that. So we've got a Balbanki same bucket. This big Duncan colony which had totally run out of space. I'll give it some more water in a sec. Uh, probably this Jardine. Rhodactus. And this other Giardini as well. You can really see the damage on some of these pieces and why we've needed to do this job. They ran out of space and there was damage here, possibly from one of the fish. There's an angel in there which has been nipping on things, but we needed more space. We need to rescape this tank. And there's a good example of why. Something else that we're going to do when we're doing this rescape is these anemones are gonna come out. We started off with one and uh, we've already removed one, but there's four in here at the moment, or three or four, or maybe just two big ones. But these are gonna come out of the tank and they've been causing a problem by stinging the corals. So the client has asked me to remove them. But we're pretty much ready to start the scape. So I'll jump in there and start moving things around and see what type of scape is gonna suit this tank.
this is one huge Monty that as it ran out of space, it started to move out of the light, things started to sting it, the anemones, it suffered a wide variety of problems and started to die. Um, but because it's one big coral, it's fused together this whole top of the escape. So I want to use this Dallas, but I also want to take this out. So I think I'm probably just going to take it outside the whole thing and just drop it on the concrete. But um, we'll see what I can do with this part. I'll take the anemones out and we'll go from there. This clownfish doesn't want me to take the anemones out. Sorry mate. So we've built about a third of our rockscape and we're using the two little fishies Aquastick which I particularly like and we're just using small amounts that we're kneading and rolling into short sausages like so and putting into the seams between the two rocks so we're strategically epoxying the rock work together. So this is our huge piece of Dallas and Monty down this end and uh, I was going to cut off some of the Dallas and use small pieces of it but I think it would be better if I actually use a large chunk of it but I want to detach this dead Monty and possibly use that elsewhere so rather than use coral cutters or any type of electrical device I'm just going to drop it on the concrete and hope it breaks where I want it to break okay it shattered <laughs> But that's okay and this piece whilst it's got a bit of bubble algae which I'll remove that might create a nice overhang and get our Dallas colony started again so I'll get this one back in the tank and come back for all these little bits of this type of bubble algae doesn't really worry me too much but I might as well remove it Well, I think I'm going to put it exactly like that. Um, I'll get some epoxy on it. This Dallas has suffered possibly more than anything else, given the tank, the smaller tank was just way too small for it. But I think it'll grow nicely there and it's certainly in a aesthetically pleasing position. So I've been aquascaping for the last hour and a half and unfortunately I've run out of time. And so I've ensured that all the corals are going to be in a position that is safe in that they're getting enough light, enough water flow and they're not going to sting anything else so that I can come back in a week's time and hopefully finish this scape. I think I've probably got another three or four hours left and as you can see it is a bit of a mess. I'm relatively happy with the overall shape but there's a lot of things I need to change. Uh, I don't like some of the angles of some of the rock and of course the positions of the coral are very very temporary but this is really all we have time for today. Now I've ensured that all of the rock has been secured with the epoxy. You can see the coralline coloured epoxy in between these bits of rock uh, and the Dallas, the parts that we're going to use have just been put in position here for now but we'll glue them in place hopefully next time. Uh, so now we just have to fill up the tank and that'll be the job done for today to be finished off another time unfortunately. So we're filling the tank back up again and this is a great opportunity for us to do an extra water change on the tank. Whenever you move corals around, especially the way we've done it today where they've been out of the water and back in the water, they slime up. Uh, the aqua, the Dallas in particular, will really slime up and it does this so that when it's out of the water, that slime will help protect it from drying out. But the reason why it's good to do a water change now is because all of that slime in the water is quite polluting and the skimmer will pull it out, but a water change at this point is a great idea. So now that we've stopped the aquascape for the time being, we're just going to go back to the board that we're working on down here for the cable management. And the one thing that we have to get done before we go is we have to mount 
these power boards. And the idea will be they'll mount underneath here and we'll probably put a hole through the side so that we can feed the cords through and so they'll be very neatly uh, into the power points and we'll have a switch on each of the components. So we'll put these in position and then we'll head off. So we've done as much as we can possibly do for today. Uh, we've run out of time. I'm a bit disappointed that we haven't got more done, but um, this is where we're at. We've got the board in place and we've got our dosing pump on its rack. We haven't even plugged it in yet because the next part, our power boards have only just been put in place. Now you can see we've got two lots of six. Hopefully that will be enough, but I have got space for a third if we need it. Now I've purposely put this second board slightly to the right with the idea that I'll put a hole through this section here and we'll feed our power cords through because the power point is on the back behind the sump. Our aquascape is, is done enough for today. Hopefully there's no collapses in the next week before we can get here again, but when we are back, we're going to finish off the aquascape, we'll plug in all of the componentry. Um, I've left a bit of space here with the thought that we might actually uh, stick labels onto it. Um, the labels don't tend to really stick very well to these power boards, but we'll see how we go with that. Uh, we might even get some cable labels, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, we sell them down at the shop. But anyway, this is it for today and this is it for today's video. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching stage two of our sump swap shuffle and um, we'll bring you the next part in the next couple of weeks. So I'm Cam the Fish Guy, happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.